might not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Oh yes, my fellow Hylians, I am very proud of this one. How would you like the maximum highest damage weapon possible? And better than that, how would you like it to last forever with infinite durability? On top of an endless supply of the most potent fuse monster bits that you can get, courtesy of some easy Lionel slaughtering at the start of the game with only four hearts. Oh, and a bonus little bit of clearly the greatest a bit of armor in Majora's Mask, which will be your cherry on top at the end of this adventure. Now, a few people, of course, have shared where to get Majora's Mask, but it's in a very deadly location behind a very deadly challenge in the depths, and everyone's done it at, obviously, end game with lots of hearts and lots of good equipment, and it's quite the brutal battle. But I really wanted to task myself with getting it done almost straight away with your basic four hearts with some basic equipment that you can get very easily without much legwork. So after working away at this for the last two, three days, I'm very glad to say that yes, I have cracked it and I can't wait to share this with you guys so you can do it too and get some silly good stuff that will make your entire playthrough so, so much both easier and better. So, first things first then, we've got a bit of a shopping list before we even go to this ridiculous place. And at the top of that shopping list is the strongest fuse part that you can get your hands on to make the strongest weapon possible initially. So I would actually recommend that you go clear Eventide Isle doing the quest Seeking the Pirate Hideout. I have a full video dedicated to this within the Rupee Farming Guide that's up on the channel, but basically just kill everything on the island, and eventually you'll get sent to this little pirate cave, kill everything in this pirate cave, and when you go back to uh, the NPC that gave you the quest to begin with, he will give you a blue maned Lionel Saber horn with 33 fuse power. This is awesome. So, now that you've pocketed that, well, we want to be launching out of Lookout Landing Skyview Tower, gliding all the way over to Hyrule Castle, where you probably have already been to get some armor and, of course, that legendary shield and such, but we're after something a bit more, well, perhaps mundane, though it has a very secret special property. Once you get into the central chamber, head up, and then behind these ruins, you will find the Royal Guard's Claymore. This will respawn on Blood Moons if you've already got it before, so worry ye not on that front, and as you can notice, it holds massive destructive power just before it breaks. What that actually means is, once the It's Badly Damage pop-up happens, it will double the damage it does until it breaks, which is only a couple hits normally, so, you know, that's nice, but nothing crazy. However, when you are on the back of a Lionel, mounting it and doing those bonus hits, those attacks don't consume durability on the weapon, meaning you can use it in this powered up state infinitely. And I was so happy when this worked how I wanted it to when I first found this weapon. So of course, fuse our blue maned Lionel Saber horn onto it, get that durability back down, and we're at 130 damage weapon to use in this endeavor. Finally then, you want probably 8 to 10 bomb flowers, you can find them most easily just around random caves, though definitely make sure you don't pick the wrong cave like I did. Oh god, please, I don't want to die, please spare me, oh god no! Oh. Oh, and it should be said, you want a couple basic bows and a good supply of arrows, about 30 or so. Nothing too crazy there. You can buy them from the shop in Lookout Landing. Talking of Lookout Landing, then, launch from the Skyview Tower, and we are going to be aiming for a Depths Pit, this one specifically right here. Once we land down, there's a few po to grab and such, but most importantly, we want to get the light route nearby, so we have a teleport back down here when we ever want to do this again. 
So for now, I will let you watch me manually run to the floating Colosseum, which is our goal here. But of course, you can use a contraption to fly over or however you would rather actually get there. But just in case, this is the way to go. It should be noted while you are watching me truck along, I would heartily recommend having at least a couple extra stamina upgrades or access to a good supply of stamina restoring consumables, though it's very annoying to just have to keep chugging them, so definitely come here with at least two extra sections of your stamina bar. With that said, then, we will eventually arrive at the Floating Colosseum, and it is here that you very much need to save the game, because you might well die a lot. Then you want to light up the arena itself with a bright bloom seed like I did earlier when I first found this place from above. And that's all well and good. Let's get into this. When you walk in then you'll get a little cutscene. The doors will seal and your first opponent will arrive. A Lionel. So this is how the strategy goes. We're not going to be using the weapon we've made for anything other than the infinite durability back attacks. Which means we need to get that mounting state happening constantly. We do this by headshotting him. Now, the Lionel's face is a little bit awkward to hit, and a lot of the time you will be convinced that you did hit it, despite the gaming like, no, 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 you didn't. I would recommend then that you essentially aim at his chin. Just where it's about to become main, that seems to be the sweet spot for it to actually give you the headshot credit. When you do get a headshot then, you will lure him into a grounded state that you can then run up to, hop on, and then mash those attacks. You will get six attacks the first time you mount the Lionel as you drain stamina. This is why you want a good supply of stamina. Then, from that point onwards, every next one you'll only get three attacks specifically. So don't just mash the attack, because if you accidentally trigger an attack after you leap off the Lionel and come slamming down, you might break the weapon, which ruins the entire process here. So you just keep on going until you eventually get enough downs to kill him. Yes, if he catches you, he will one-shot you. Yes, if he hits you in any way, he will one-shot you. You might have to load a few times, but eventually you will get the four or five headshots needed to beat him. Ironically, this is probably the hardest one because you're doing it with a normal bow. When he goes down, what you want to do is pick up everything that you can and want from his body, specifically specifically to make sure to include the bow. Now, as soon as you've grabbed everything, save the game. This will lock it into your inventory. Everything left on the ground will go away as your next Lionel, the blue one, will come charging at you and likely, probably, murder your face. <laughs> But that's okay, because we've got a brand new toy. That Lionel bow fires three arrows at once, so swap to it and use Lionel bows from here on out, as it quite literally triples your chance at getting that headshot for the mount. Other than that, I would recommend using the treasure chest in the center of the arena as a kind of barrier between you and the Lionel you're currently fighting. As it kind of struggles with the pathing around it, it provides this little bit of extra breathing room and time as it tries to work out and it stops you ch getting charged and it's just a nice little bit of terrain to play off if you need any extra breathing room to get more time to hit the headshots. Other than that, bring him down, grab everything off the ground and once again save, second check point achieved. Next up then, we get our white main Lionel, and I would recommend upgrading bows as you go, as you'll get slowly higher damage ones, and the arrow damage itself will add up, especially if you miss as much as me. Other than that, the strategy remains the same. Get your headshots, put them in the state, get on the back, do your series of attacks, six attacks the first time, three every subsequent time, and you will bring him down with your colossal 130 plus power weapon, shredding through his otherwise massive health pool. Thank <laughs> you. 
Then our fourth, Lionel. Yes, there's four. Well, there's actually five. This really is quite the challenge if you weren't cheesing it like this. And we get ourselves a silver Lionel. The rarest and hardest of them all, but no less susceptible to, yep, yeah, just being shot in the face and, well, hit repeatedly from his back as you let him know he's been quite the naughty little lion centaur. Can I say that? Can I say naughty little lion centaur? I guess I just did, so... It is what it is. And eventually, once again, you will bring him down. Once again, grab everything off the floor and save the game. Now is when the final and hardest challenge comes along a armored silver Lionel. This is what you picked up the bombs for. Fortunately, with a bow that triple fires bombs, it's not too bad, but I would recommend initially just running so that you have quite the distance from and are facing where he enters the arena and saving again so that if you die and load in, you actually load in in a place that gives you time to fire off multiple shots before he even gets to you. Then you just want to be firing bomb shot after bomb shot after bomb shot. It will take probably five squares hits to peel off his armor. When you do peel it off, you will end up in a situation where you've downed him as a result, so you get that first free mount and those first free series of attacks. From that point onwards, it's exactly as hard as the previous one. The giant ball mace might be annoying because it obfuscates his face, but it doesn't actually count as real for the arrows. They will face through it and still hit him, so all that matters truly is your aim still. You don't have to avoid it. And then, uh, once he is dead, Dead. Congratulations, for you are the truest of Lionel Slayers, and you have multiple Silver Lionel Fuse Parts, which you can now use infinitely forever for the rest of your playthrough, and we'll go over that in a second. But, of course, don't forget to check the chest that you've now unlocked for, yes, Majora's Mask. Lovely to see it, and it will make you harder to spot, so it does have some practical uses, too. And that is that then. However, head to Tarrytown by teleporting to the Rasikashika Waka Waka Shrine and flying on over. We've got a whole video dedicated to this too, but here is an NPC that will remove fused parts from a weapon without destroying them. So you can pop off your now damaged blue maned Royal Claymore and get that back too, because you no longer need it. And if you do attach your now plus 55 silver saber horn to it, you'll end up with, yes, that sweet, sweet 174 damage weapon. Of course, perhaps not so practical, but that doesn't matter too much when you can just make like six super powered Lionel weapons based on anything that you have. And again, whenever they get low, when that durability warning pops up, come back to this guy, Mr. Pellison, and get him to remove the part so that you can then fuse it to something else. So essentially, you will never have to farm another Lionel again once you have done this and you will just have an endless supply of Lionel weapons. That is fantastic, and it really is cool that this is possible so early on, with only four hearts, with basic armor, and such forth thanks to this combination of stuff. I hope you have found this useful, and again, I am really proud of this one. It took a lot of working out, a lot of doing, and it's been a really fun project this last few days. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.